Tigers are the largest members of the cat family and are instantly recognizable thanks to their striking orange and black stripes. These apex predators are capable of taking down prey of all sizes, from rodents to elephant calves. Fiery and imposing, aggressive and powerful, tigers have aroused fascination in humans through millennia, but they have also experienced threats in their natural environment as a result of human activities. The tigers have anatomy with over 600 muscles and a strong bone structure that makes them apex predators in their natural habitat. They evolved from their ancestors for almost 2 million years, continuously adapting to their environment. All tigers are native to Asia and belong to a single species Panthera tigris, which has six subspecies. Siberian tiger, Bengal tiger, Malayan tiger, Indo-Chinese tiger, South China tiger, and Sumatran tiger. Body size and morphology vary considerably among subspecies of tigers. Siberian tigers, also known as Amur tigers, are the largest. Male Siberian tigers can grow to 3.7 meters or 12.1 feet and weigh over 423 kilograms or 932 pounds. Male Indochinese tigers, though smaller than Siberian tigers in body size at 2.8 meters or 9.2 feet in length and 195 kilograms or 430 pounds, have the longest skull of all tiger subspecies. Sumatran tigers are the smallest living subspecies. Male Sumatran tigers measure 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet and weigh 136 kilograms or 300 pounds. Tigers have short, thick necks, broad shoulders, and massive forelimbs, ideal for grappling with prey while holding on with long retractable claws and broad forepaws. A tiger's tongue is covered with hard papillae to scrape the flesh off the bones of prey. Tigers are carnivores and can capture and eat large mammals. Deer, antelope, buffalo, and wild boar are some of the prey of tigers. They also eat monkeys, sloth bears, and leopards. Tigers have even been known to eat crocodiles. Tigers use one of two tactics when they get close enough to kill. Small animals, weighing less than half the body weight of the tiger, are killed by a bite to the back of the neck. The canines are inserted between the neck vertebrae, forcing them apart and breaking the spinal cord. For larger animals, a bite to the throat is used to crush the animal's trachea and suffocate it. The throat bite is the safer killing tactic because it minimizes any physical assault the tiger may receive while trying to kill its prey. After the prey is taken to cover, tigers feed first on the buttocks using the carnassials to rip open the carcass. As the tiger progresses, it opens the body cavity and removes the stomach. Not all of the prey is eaten. Some parts are rejected. Prey are usually dragged to cover and can be left there and revisited over several days. Although tigers are extremely efficient hunters, they don't always make the kill as you would expect them to. When they can sneak up on the prey, they only have a few seconds to pounce and kill them by biting them in the neck area. Tigers are solitary. The only long-term relationship is between a mother and her offspring. They are most active at night when their wild ungulate prey are most active, although they can be active at any time of the day. Tigers prefer to hunt in dense vegetation and along routes where they can move quietly. In snow, they select routes on frozen riverbeds, in paths made by ungulates, or anywhere else that has a reduced snow depth. Tigers have tremendous leaping ability. Being able to leap from 8 to 10 meters, leaps of half that distance are more typical. They are excellent swimmers and water doesn't usually act as a barrier to their movement. Tigers are also excellent climbers, using their retractable claws and powerful legs. The IUCN categorizes tigers as endangered and lists illegal poaching as the main threat to the species. Tigers are poached so their body parts and fur can be sold as part of the illegal wildlife trade. Tiger bones are used in traditional Asian medicines, and similar markets seek tiger skin, teeth, and other parts. In addition to the threat of poaching, tiger habitat is being converted into agriculture or human settlements and commercially logged. Tiger attacks on humans and livestock also bring the cat into conflict with people who kill them in retaliation. 
First, we need to better understand if tigers would adapt to the Amazon rainforest. There are key elements that differentiate Amazon from the other environments where tigers once roamed. Often called the lungs of the earth, the Amazon rainforest spans nine countries, but about 60% lies in Brazil. Tropical rainforests are home to the largest and the smallest, the loudest and the quietest of all land animals, as well as some of the most dangerous, most beautiful, most endearing, and strangest looking animals on earth. The Amazon is home to more species of plants and animals than any other terrestrial ecosystem on the planet. Perhaps 30% of the world's species are found there. Its biodiversity is astounding. A single bush in the Amazon may have more species of ants than the entire British Isles, while a single hectare of forest may have more than 500 species of trees, and a single park can have more than 1,400 butterfly species. Competition for survival is fierce. This may explain why over millions of years of evolution so many highly adapted species have evolved in this biome. Tigers like floodplains, grasslands, and forests ranging from temperate to tropical, but they will often stay in forests classified as moist or dry, not rainforests. Many of the tiger reserves with the highest density and best management status, such as Bandofgar and Corbett, have large expanses of moist, dense deciduous forests, as well as streams and grasslands. These areas are not rainy enough to be considered rainforests. Many tiger reserves in India are found in upland regions, like the Western Ghats. The habitats in which tigers are found are quite varied, but they are primarily moist or dry forests. However, there are sections of both the Western Ghats and the Sundarbans that may be classified as rainforests, and it would surprise me if tiger habitats did not intersect with these areas. South America, except the Andes llamas, does not have large herds of herbivores to hunt. Like Asia, llamas are close relatives to camels. Not too far in history, both camels and tigers were widespread in Asia, and camels were common prey for both tigers and Asiatic lions. The situation in the Amazon rainforest is even worse. There are simply no herds, except for wild pigs, and the herbivores there adapted to smaller sizes compared to other regions. Even the jaguar there is smaller than it bothers from Pantanal. Deers in the Amazon do not live in herds and are mostly the size of goats. Even the canids there are smaller and live in smaller groups than their counterparts in the world. Due to this scenario, the jaguar, the apex predator there, lives on a great variety of animals, from the large tapirs to small everything. Having a menu with more than 100 different prey species, they even fish and prey on alligators, not to mention they break giant river turtle shells in one bite, as they are very well adapted. It would not be an easy life for tigers. All larger cats disappeared from South America together with extinct megafauna for a reason. Jaguar size is the best force and size combo nature came with. Siberian and most Bengal tigers would find Amazon to be too dense and too wet for their liking, but tigers are highly adaptive animals. For example, Sundurban tigers would probably do just fine in the Amazon. They live in the mangroves, which are crisscrossed by so many rivers, smaller in size, and are used to live on smaller prey. They are still Bengal tigers genetically but are quite different in nature and physique from the tigers of the rest of the subcontinent. However, introducing sub-durban tigers in the Amazon would be destructive for the jaguars, as the tigers would directly compete with them for food and territory. Though these tigers are somewhat smaller than others, they are still significantly bigger than jaguars. They are also more aggressive than tigers from any other region. Tigers live far from Africa, the territory of lions. This has led many animal enthusiasts to wonder what would happen if tigers lived in Africa and competed with lions for a meal. The African continent is known for its great diversity of wild flora and fauna. The diverse ecosystems of the continent are home to wildlife species found nowhere else in the world, including some of the world's deadliest animals. Tigers already survive in places like snowy mountains, desert plateaus, dense forests, humid jungles, 
open grasslands, and quite a lot in between. Even though the tiger-striped camouflage performs best in jungles and forests, the woodlands and savannas of much of Africa would not stop this adept apex predator from hunting successfully. Since most prey species do not see a full range of colors, but more silhouettes and movement, the tiger's hunting strategy actually works reasonably well in a surprisingly wide range of habitats. Chasing prey out on the open grasslands, though, could pose a problem for this cat that is more bulk muscle than lean speed. With most hunts never reaching cheetah speeds, many African predators never need to run faster than around 30 miles an hour. Leopards, in fact, do quite well in all of Africa, with a similar strategy of stalking and pouncing, using smarts and power, instead of sheer speed. A game plan that Panthera tigris can definitely get its teeth around. In fact, the whole experiment has already been done. Two projects, both challenged by ethical or financial issues, have released several tigers into protected reserves in South Africa. The Lauhu Valley Reserve Project was created in 2002 by a conservation group called Save China's Tigers. The intent was to nurture and rewild captive-born South China in South Africa and eventually release them into a protected natural habitat in China. This tiger subspecies is listed as critically endangered and effectively extinct in the wild. Only about 100 individuals are left in the world, all living in zoos or small protected reserves, and all descended from just six wild-caught individuals. The SCT project has proven that captive-born tigers can easily learn to survive and hunt wild African prey species, and several purebred South China tiger cubs have been born to the successful group. The Lauhu Reserve is now home to almost a full 20% of surviving South China tigers. Creating this ex situ conservation breeding group of tigers outside China has added to the security of the species in the wild, while at the same time, has helped to restore a natural biome to a section of South Africa that had been decimated by intensive sheep farming years earlier. Tiger Canyon, also in South Africa, is another fenced reserve and home to a group of hunting and breeding tigers. However, because these tigers are unendangered hybrids, including inbred white tigers, it has no true species conservation value. Acquired through dubious financial means, the project's ethics were further controversial, since the reserve was created solely to make the film Living with Tigers on the Discovery Channel. Though the founder of the reserve was almost killed by one of these tigers in 2012, the reserve is now run as a privately owned, for-profit safari lodge. Despite the controversial conservation value of Tiger Canyon, it has helped the Lauhu Valley Reserve to prove tigers can easily survive in Africa. Conflict with native African wildlife and predators could potentially pose problems for any tigers allowed outside these protected reserves. But tigers in places like India and Siberia have proven they are adept at dealing with other large carnivores just fine. It might take a bit of adaptation, but tigers are no slouches when it comes to asserting themselves and thriving whenever given the space and protection to do so. Another hypothetical but interesting option would be for tigers to be inspired by cheetahs and form coalitions. This model of organization could make them the main force of the savanna and could cause serious problems for the lions. Any ecosystem on Earth can be found in North America, from the snowy tundras of Greenland to the tropics of Costa Rica, deserts, forests, Mountains and everything in between occupy this territory, along with the rich variety of animals you'd expect to find. North America has a diverse array of wildlife species and is home to an estimated 457 mammals, 914 birds, 662 reptiles, and more than 300 amphibians. North America includes the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Greenland, each laden with diverse ecological systems that sustain these unique animal species. Tigers would do great in North America, at least parts of it, 
They are predators of boreal forests, so North American forests would probably feel right at home. They would probably hunt deer, moose, and elk primarily. They could adapt to attacking bison eventually, but might struggle at first against such large animals. However, tigers would be a huge problem for American predators. A tiger is more than a match for any predator North America has to offer. They kill leopards in India, so they'd probably take out cougars all the time. They suppress wolf numbers whenever they occur, and would in North America too. They hunt bears in India and Russia and would destroy native black and grizzly bears. The North American continent has many predators. Gray wolf, red wolf, mountain lion, bobcat, and lynx to name a few. They weigh between 40 to 200 pounds or 18 to 92 kilograms. Jaguars, which weigh between 120 and 220 pounds, or 56 to 96 kilograms, are also native to southwest North America. The largest predator on the North American continent is the polar bear, at 770 to 1,500 pounds, or 250 to 700 kilograms. During prehistoric times, North America was home to several large predators, including the American lion, which was approximately 30% larger than today's African lion, dire wolf, or scimitar-toothed cats. All these animals became extinct for one reason or another. For an invasive species to take hold, it basically has to be able to fit an existing ecological niche and outcompete the original species. This would be the main problem for a tiger. There is no ecological niche in North America for a predator that weighs between 200 and 600 pounds, or 90 to 300 kilograms. American wildlife would probably adapt to tigers within a few generations but it would be a difficult process, which could lead to the extinction of several animal species. Another big issue would be humans who would probably hunt and persecute the tigers for messing with big game and livestock. Antarctica is very different than Siberia, except for the cold, of course. Antarctica is essentially an enormous desert, Thus, the reason for a complete lack of vegetation, with the only types of vascular plants except for two on the west coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. The polar biome in the north, as well as the tundra, are not home to Siberian tigers. The northern edge of the boreal forests is their northern limit. Animals that spend any amount of time on Antarctica are semi-aquatic and use the continent as a temporary resting or breeding area. The lack of flora beyond mosses prohibits the residence of any kind of herbivores. It is not simply the cold that prohibits plant life. The shallow soil does not allow vascular plants to establish the extensive root system that provides them with the water and the nutrients they require, along with giving them the stability to withstand the extreme winds there. Even more problematic is the scarcity of water. Antarctica is a vast, frozen desert, very different from the northern polar regions in this regard. Many people are surprised to learn that it does not snow there. So, you don't even have the minimum requirements for a basic terrestrial community, with producers providing a steady food supply for herbivores, and in turn, the herbivores providing a food supply for omnivores, or carnivores such as the tiger. But what if you gave the tiger plenty of food and fresh water? Would it be able to survive? The answer is a resounding no. Consider the fact that nothing stops the tigers from migrating to the northern polar biomes. But instead, their extreme northern limit is the boreal forests. In fact, there are no species of cat, not even the lynx, that inhabits the polar regions of the north. This is probably due partly to the lack of a consistent food supply. And with polar bears filling the niche of an apex predator, there simply isn't enough food to support more. In reality, no cat species is well adapted to cope with the harsh conditions. If they were, they would have most likely moved there in the recent past. There are none at all, not even in the tundra biome, which is slightly more hospitable than the polar biomes. So as far as adaptations, none would be sufficient. Polar bears are adapted to the extreme cold and bareness of the polar biome in a way that Siberian tigers are not. 
Tigers lack the 6-inch layer of fat that polar bears have, which helps insulate them from the cold. Could Siberian tigers simply evolve this? Possibly, if the necessary biological information was contained in the genotype of the tigers. Adaptations do not come about upon an as-needed basis, but are purely random. And to produce this layer of fat, other necessary physiological changes would need to occur, which without prior genotype information available, would be extremely unlikely to occur. You might ask, what about the sensible adaptation of white fur? Again, does the gene for white fur exist in the genotype of the Siberian tiger? Possibly. So, would the tiger change to a pure white coloration? Possibly. Though again, we find it unlikely, as no truly white tigers have been documented. The tiger's tail would be a disadvantage because it increases heat loss. Is the tiger's tail going to fall off? Only if a random mutation made the gene functionally advantageous enough for it to be passed on to more offspring, and the offspring's taillessness gave them a competitive advantage to reproduce. But once again, it would only occur based on complete randomness. If the gene does not exist for taillessness in tigers, then it would not appear. In conclusion, Siberian tigers do not exist in polar regions because they are simply not adapted to them. And even placing a tiger in a polar region with sufficient food would not allow it to survive. Tigers occupy a wide range of habitats including rainforests, grasslands, savannas, and mangrove swamps. In Siberia, they endure temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and in mangrove swamps, they thrive in 104 degree heat. They are less tolerant of heat than some of the other big cats and have become excellent swimmers as a result. They often bathe in lakes and rivers to keep cool in the rainforests and mangroves. The habitats they occupy are abundant in their prey species. Deer are tigers' primary prey, and these are abundant in mixed grassland forests. Tigers are mostly nocturnal. They come out at night to hunt, eat, and prowl their territories. During the day, they find coolness in the shade of trees, rocks, and tall grass to lie down. They often sleep for up to 16 hours a day. They hunt at night because that is when their prey is often out and about. Deer and wild boar forage during dusk, dawn, and during nighttime. In Europe, there are no tropical rainforests or mangrove swamps, but there are temperate rainforests and grasslands. Siberian tigers mostly inhabit coniferous, scrub oak, and birch forests in eastern Russia. Vast swaths of coniferous forests cover Europe. The boreal forest, predominantly made up of coniferous trees, is found throughout Sweden and Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and much of the Baltic Sea. The Siberian tiger subspecies would be the best subspecies adapted to the habitats and climate found in Europe. They would find the cool temperatures of Europe's forests and temperate rainforests easy to cope with. The density of the foliage would suit their lifestyle, and there would be an abundance of prey for them to hunt. As well as heavily forested regions in Europe, about a third of the continent is covered in grassland. Half of Europe's endemic species depend on grassland. In Asia, tigers frequent grasslands due to the predominance of grazing prey species. In Europe, this is no different with deer, rabbits, rodents, amphibians, and birds calling grasslands their home. This important habitat is under threat though with increases in agriculture and urbanization. If both grasslands and forests are maintained throughout Europe, in terms of habitat, we believe tigers could survive in Europe. But what about prey? Are the right kind of prey species available throughout Europe's forests and grasslands? We have already mentioned that deer are tigers' preferred prey. Depending on the subspecies, tigers will eat sambar, chittle, and swamp deer. They also prey on wild boar and, interestingly, porcupines. They are solitary animals and hunt alone. Therefore, they are best adapted to taking down medium-sized prey. But it's not uncommon for them to tackle water buffalo, gower, and even elephants. Europe's fallow deer are compatible in size to the chittle deer found in India, which are often predated by tigers. They are, however, smaller than sambar and swamp deer. 
two favorites for tigers living in Asia. Fallow deer are found throughout Europe, particularly in the West. They graze open grasslands and woodlands, and herds can number in the hundreds. The roe deer could also be considered prey for tigers in Europe. They are found in woodlands and mountain ranges, and graze during dawn and dusk. Tigers are well adapted to hunting in low light. They have excellent night vision. They have a structure at the back of their eyes called a tapetum lucidum. This acts like a mirror, reflecting more light that otherwise would have escaped onto the eye. They also have more rods than cones in their eyes. This enables them to see better movement at night, as less well in color, which is not as important in the dark. European wild boars are nocturnal in the summer and diurnal during winter. There is a large population of wild boar found in mainland Europe. They number in their millions and, like the wild pigs found throughout Asia, could make up a significant part of the tiger's diet. In Siberia, where the climate can be harsh and unforgiving, tigers need to eat a mid-sized boar or deer every three to four days. Having such large numbers of wild boar throughout Europe could sustain a population of tigers, especially if deer, rodents, birds, and fish are also on the menu. If they can, tigers will eat 10 kilograms of meat every day. Their hunting success rate is quite low though. On average, only one in 10 hunts succeeds. If they make a large kill, they can eat up to 50 kilograms of meat in a single sitting. Tigers deliberately stash and hide their carcasses from scavengers so that they can return to feast again once they've had their fill. Tigers currently coexist with other top predators. They share the habitat with leopards, Asiatic wild dogs, brown bears, and wolves. In Kuiburi National Park in Thailand, leopards and wild dogs actively avoid tigers. They have adapted to hunt mostly during the day, whereas the tigers hunt at night. They also avoid grasslands, which tigers are known to frequent. In Europe, apex predators include brown bears, wolves, wolverines, and two species of lynx. It is likely these predators would occupy similar niches to tigers and hunt similar prey. If space and prey abundance was large enough, it is possible these animals could all avoid each other and have few confrontations with tigers. As tigers can hunt a wide variety of animals, we believe there would be enough prey for them to survive in Europe. In some parts of India, tigers are considered a menace because they can attack agricultural livestock. The same could happen in Europe. With such large territories, tigers need space to roam and hunt. If space, habitat, and prey are limited, they wander further and further, often conflicting with people. Finally, we need to consider Europe's climate. As a species, tigers can occupy a range of habitats with varying temperatures. They live in both tropical and temperate climates. Annual temperatures average 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the tropics, and temperate temperatures range between 32 and 64 degrees Fahrenheit. The Indo-Chinese tiger inhabits areas that experience a wide range of temperatures and rainfall. In the western forest complex straddling Thailand and Myanmar, where a significant population of tigers is found, there are very hot summers reaching 104 degrees Fahrenheit, a humid rainy season, and cold winters dipping to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Tigers living in warmer climates keep cool by swimming in lakes and rivers. The Siberian tigers, on the other hand, keep warm with dense fur and a thick layer of fat. The average winter temperatures across Europe are much milder than those of Siberia at around 49 degrees Fahrenheit. The average summer temperatures are in the region of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The European climate is well within the limits where tigers could live. In conclusion, it seems that tigers could survive in Europe if we are only considering habitat, diet, and climate. But, of course, there are many other things to consider. Tigers are under serious threat of extinction. Habitat loss through urbanization and deforestation has destroyed tiger populations. Climate change has also contributed to rising sea levels, threatening tigers living in coastal regions of Bangladesh and India, and poaching tigers for their body parts for jewelry, rituals, and traditional medicine has pushed this magnificent animal to the brink of extinction. If they lived in Europe, it is likely they would face similar pressures as humans continue to expand and disrupt the delicate balance of the world's ecosystems. That's all for today. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time, time.